Hello friends, welcome back to our channel. Today in part 6.1 of our Mastering Parallel Programming series in C-Shop, we are going to learn about Producer Consumer Collection with iProducer Consumer Collection T interface. So before we get started, just a quick reminder to subscribe my channel, hit the red button and don't forget to click on the little bell icon that way you will be notified every time I upload a new video. Okay, without any further delay, let's get started. Parallel programming using PFX that is Parallel Framework Extension Libraries in C-Sharp. If you have been following along with my previous videos in this series, you might recognize this diagram. In those videos, we have covered two pillars of structured data parallelism, p link queue and parallel class. I also covered task parallelism. And in our last videos, we discussed an overview of this concurrent collections. So, in our last video, we discussed an overview of the system.collection.concurrent namespaces, its classes, interfaces, and the enums. If you haven't watched those videos yet, I highly recommend you do. You might find the link to that video somewhere in the upper right hand corner in this video. Today, we are focusing on the iProducer Consumer Collection T interface. Efficient Producer Consumer Collection with iProducer Consumer Collection T interface. So first of all, we should know what is a producer consumer collection. So let's break it down. Producer is someone who creates or adds item to a collection. For example, let's imagine a factory worker who keeps adding products to a conveyor belt. Now come to the consumer. Consumer is someone who takes items from the collection and uses or removes them. So here you can imagine another worker who takes products off the conveyor belt to pack them into the boxes. Now the question arises, why are they important? In parallel programming, many tasks can be done at the same time that is the concurrently. To manage this, we need a way to handle items being added and removed from a collection safely without causing errors or data corruption. So that's where producer consumer comes into the picture. It helps by allowing multiple producer and consumer to work with the collection at the same time efficiently. Now let's see the structure of iProducer Consumer Collection T interface defined in the system.collection.concurrent namespace. So here we have couple of the methods copy to, to array, try add, try take. Now let's discuss iProducer Consumer Collection T interface key method and its implementing classes. So key methods. We are having two key methods try add and try take. Try add T item basically it's add an item to the collection and it always returns true in the provided implementation. So here try add method works as a producer. Now comes to the try take method. It tries to remove an item from the collection. It returns false if the collection is empty. So here try take method works as a consumer. Now there are several classes that implement iProducer Consumer Collection T interface. What are those classes? Classes are concurrent stack, concurrent queue and concurrent back. What is concurrent stack? It works like a stack, last in first out. Okay, so let's imagine you have a stack of plates in front of you. When you need to add a new plate to the stack, you place it on the top of the stack. Similarly, when you need to remove a plate, you take it from the top of the stack. So this process of adding and removing plates always happens at the top of the stack without disturbing the plates underneath. So that's how this concurrent stack is going to work. Producer job is to add plates to the stack. Consumer job is to remove the top plate from the stack. Now come to the concurrent queue. It works like a queue. First in, first out. Let's imagine people are standing in a line. The first person in line is the first to leave. Next, we have concurrent bag. A bag where items are added and removed in the most efficient way possible without a specific order. Now, question arises why we use these collections. So, basically, there are two main benefits. Number one, efficiency. They are designed to be fast and avoid overhead of locking mechanism. Number two, thread safety. They handle synchronization internally, so you don't have to worry about the data corruption when multiple threads are adding or removing items. Okay, so now let's switch to the Visual Studio and see all these things in action. Okay, so here we are on Visual Studio. Here we are going to see the demo of I Producer Consumer Collection implemented class concurrent key. To show the demo, what I have done, I have created one console application named I Producer Consumer Demo that has program.cs. In program.cs file, first of all, I have added necessary namespaces like using system, using system.collection.concurrent, using system.threading.task. If you notice this namespace system.collection.concurrent, this namespace contains concurrent collections. That's what I have added this namespace to use this concurrent collection in this program. So now if you see, I have written one class named program that has main method which is an entry point of this application. So here, first of all, I am just printing this statement into console. What I am printing? Demo of iProducer Consumer Collection T interface 
implemented class concurrent queue t next what i have done i have created an instance of this concurrent queue class of in data type that's what i have written where q is equal to new concurrent queue int now if you see what this concurrent queue structure looks like so let me go and click this go to definition if you see this concurrent queue is under this namespace system dot collection dot concurrent and this concurrent queue is implementing this namespace i producer consumer collection along with other interfaces here we have two constructor current queue which is nothing but the parameter less constructor second one is the concurrent queue i numerable t collection this is the parameterized constructor then we have two read only property count and is empty then we have couple of the method here we have three important method that is the in queue try d queue and try b in queue method is something by which we can add an item into the concurrent queue collection try d queue is just going to retrieve or remove the item from the concurrent queue collection try pick it is just going to get an object from this concurrent queue collection but we are not going to remove it that's where we are going to use this try pick method if you see this definition of the in queue what it says it says adds an object to the end of the system dot collection dot concurrent dot concurrent queue and what parameters is where we are going to add it the object to add to the end of the system dot collection dot concurrent concurrent queue the value can be a null reference nothing in the visual study for reference type so this method help us to add an item into the concurrent queue collection now come to try dq what it says it says tries to remove and return the object at the beginning of the concurrent queue. what the parameter result it would be it is just going to return as a result when this method returns if the operation was successful the result contains the object remove if no objects was available to be removed the value is going to be unspecified it returns the true if an element was removed and return from the beginning of the this collection successfully otherwise is just going to return false value that's what this summary parameter and returns is talk about about this try document now if you see this try peak here it says it tries to return an object from the beginning of the system dot collection dot concurrent concurrent queue without removing it. what would be the result result when this method returns result contains an object from the beginning of the system dot collection dot concurrent concurrent queue or an unspecified value if the operation failed so it returns true if an object was returned successfully otherwise it is just going to return the false value that's how this try peak method is going to behave okay so let me close this and come to the program so here what i have done i have created an instance of this concurrent queue class and i am storing into the queue variable then i have written one task that is going to work as a producer what producer work is is just going to add an item to the queue that's what i have written task producer is equal to task dot run here i have written the for loop that is going to get executed 10 times and every run what we are going to do we are going to use this in queue method in order to add an item to the concurrent queue collection that's what i have written q dot in queue i whatever i have in queued i'm just printing into this console window produced and whatever the i value is there right now come to the consumers consumer what it does it is just going to take an items from the concurrent queue collection that's what i have written task consumer is equal to task dot run and again here i have written the for loop that is going to get executed 10 times here i'm just going to use this while loop in while loop i'm just checking okay if q dot try dq is going to return the value we are taking out that item from the concurrent queue collection and then wait until an item is available that's what i have written this statement task dot delay 50 wait finally i'm just printing into this consumed item right so that's what i have written console dot right line consume i then i have issued this statement task dot wait all producer dot consumer so this statement makes sure that these two tasks producer and consumer gets completed then only it is just allowing control to proceed further then i have written the console dot read line so basically it holds this console as screen so that we can read it out then we can click the enter button then program is going to get closed okay so that's how this program is constructed let me go and execute this program and show this output to you okay so output got appear into this console window if you see demo of i producer consumer collection t interface implemented class concurrent q t statement got printed if you see this producer producer has produced 0 1 2 3 4 5 6 7 8 9 in this fashion in the incremented fashion right and consumer is going to retrieve an item from this concurrent queue collection it is going to retrieve the item from zero this producer and consumer in the concurrent queue collection it is just going to follow this before first in first out that's what first item got inserted zero first item got removed from the concurrent queue collection is zero first in first out so we have seen the producer add numbers 0 to 9 to the concurrent queue and the consumer removes and prints these numbers. 
right by this demo i try to demonstrate you how i producer consumer collection t makes it easy to implement rate safe producer consumer patterns in your application okay so that brings me to end of my session today i hope you now have a better understanding of producer consumer collection and the i producer consumer collection t interface that's all for this video guys if you like this video hit the like button share it with your friends and colleagues subscribe to my channel if you haven't done already thanks for watching see you next video